Mike, hello. Hi, John. You okay? I'm, I'm fabulous, thanks. Yeah, and um, I know you're a busy man. <laughs> Apparently, we're moving to a new stadium, which is good. Yeah. yeah. And for a long time, Toffee TV have wanted to do a piece around fundamentally data science. Yeah. And you are head of data science for Everton, right? Yes, that's correct. So what the heck is a data scientist? So, I mean, the role of a data scientist is mainly to help a company or club, for uh, example, Everton, to make better, more informed decisions on a whole, you know, manner of subjects from day-to-day -day issues all the way to big strategic projects like the, the stadium. Right. So you've got a huge database or multiple databases? Uh, multiple databases. So you think kind of ticketing, merchandise, mm. online, app, you know, all of those things exist separately. So we need to bring them all together mm. to make sure that any decisions are kind of, you know, fully coherent and take yeah. all the available data into so account. There's huge amounts of artifacts to play with. Yes. Very See, I know technical <laughs> stuff. That's what that is, artifacts. Yeah. Um, but the key, Absolute key, isn't it? And, and it, you know, if, for the people who are watching this, because we're going to talk about the stadium in a minute, if that's okay. Yeah. Sure. And, and the very, for me anyway, emotive thing about how do I get a seat and, you know, all, all the timeframes around that. But what's key here is huge amounts of data are great, but they're useless unless you can convert them into insight. Yeah. And that insight is actually useless unless the decision makers are prepared to take the insight you and your team provide, and maybe even recommendations that you provide, yeah. but they ultimately make the decisions. Does that, is that how it really works? I mean, that's the theory. How Does it work like that? No, it certainly does work like that, and okay. even more so um, over the last few years. So as you said, what our role in the team is to kind of source that data from all those multiple different mm. pots, we bring them together, we analyze them, mm. and then we make recommendations. And those recommendations can be in you know, form of reports, big strategic mm. projects, like the new stadium, like migration, saying this is how we should do it, okay. and here's how it should work, all the way to on-the-fly decisions, so we'll create business intelligence environments with dashboards for mm. the you know executive team to look at and make day-by-day -day decisions based on what the data's oh. telling them. I mean, that's really key, I think, and, and uh, that's interesting because most fans know who Opta are. The, the, we all see the analytics around data on players. You're sort of doing that data on the business yeah it's a it's a really good way of, of looking at it so yeah the kind of explosion in data science and football is mm. mainly being centered on what is on the pitch but mm. it does happen off the pitch as well so um have you got the xg on pitch we've got kind of expected kind of metrics on the fan side you're totally right oh that's cool hey hey Maybe you can come up with a load of acronym, uh, you know, abbreviations and stuff, and fans can live and breathe those. No, no, let's not go there. <laughs> um, so, so that's cool. And, and but you talk about um, decision making and you provide recommendations yeah. as a team. Yeah. Right. Are they reactive? I.e., the leadership ask you to find something out for us, and I guess they do do that. But are they also proactive where you see something in the data which you think a particular, you know, day-to-day -day business leader needs to know about? Yeah, certainly. I mean, there's a healthy mix of both. Really. Oh, good, so good. we can have those reactive requests coming into to me and the team. But certainly talking about migration, I know we've talked about it um, with the fans of being a two-year process. Mm. Probably me and the team, certainly on a personal level, this would probably be more of a three-year process. Mm. So it's something that we've seen coming on the horizon and want to get geared up and ready. Um, so that's where we've then gone to the the executives of the club and went, this is coming down the line. We think we need to be have a plan in place for ready for when we, we do that move. That's good, because I've got a plan. It's here, right? <laughs> and this is all the plan of what I was going to ask you. Yeah. And the next thing was planning for Bramley Moor Dock. And you've already answered that one. Um, so do you run scenarios a, a lot as well? Yeah, getting the data in and analysing and running various types of scenarios to say, well, what would outcome A mm. be on scenario one? What would B, C, D, you know, et cetera. And then looking at all the different outcomes and scenarios and go, right, well, what would work best for the majority of the fan base mm. and the club in, yeah, in okay. turn and how we find a path forward using the data. So at the end, you know, on first day at the new stadium, when we look around, if we got the best, kind of outcome we could have sure. done for the migration. And that, I mean, that, that's a good point, I think. And most of us now, because I'm a season ticket holder and every season ticket holder has had the first email telling them what's going to happen. We all know that the approach is going to be based on tenure yeah. for doing seat selection. And that, I guess, is the outcome of that's the preferred scenario. Yes. So what made that the right way to do it? So, I mean, our 
we had a research program which had three strands that span the last two years. Mm. First one was matter experience, second one was kind of digital journeys and mm. lifestyle for the fans, mm. and the third one was the, this key one about migration. So we asked, firstly asked a survey about migration that got answered by just under 10,000 of our fans. That's a good data set, that, isn't it? It's Is well it enough. It's more than enough. Yeah. If, if you kind of use a sample calculator and we can basically be 99.99% sure of the data that the fans are telling us. So if we have 94% of the fans saying tenure is by far the fairest way, we can be 99.9% .9 sure that if we asked every season to get holder, you get the same outcome. We would get the same outcome. It's the 6% who are going to complain, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's life, right? Yeah, it, and, you it know, is. personal situations and who you want to sit next to and all those sort of things, they're always going to be the things that people hear about. But I think the key that you just said, test my understanding now, we are 99% certain, point 99, whatever, that if we actually got every single fan to answer the questions, because we didn't, we only got yeah. say, only 10,000, but that's a big data set, isn't it, Massive. right? Um, that the outcome would be very much the same. So, yeah. so the preferred scenario, based on tenure, is what, 94% of not just season ticket holders per se, but fans think is the right way. Yeah, it's okay, a, cool. yeah. Yeah, significant percent said it was the right way. I mean, that's one element to it. So one thing the fans said is the right way. Mm. Second one, it's it's from a technical standpoint we can implement it because okay. we've got the data that we are currently mm. checking with the fans in in kind of data engineering. I was going to ask a question about that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but we've got the data and we can implement it because one thing we were conscious of, certainly in that migration survey, is that we didn't want to give people responses or options that actually we, we can't we can't implement mm. it. We can't put that into yeah. yeah. Into so play. it's not rigid. No. And that, again, that is key. Because the only walk the talk is in January when people start picking seats. Yeah. So would you change, you not you personally, but yeah. it's your team who are going to do it, right? <laughs> Data is going to change, isn't it? You've got that 94% view you've got, which you think is 99.99% accurate. Yeah. And then people are going to do stuff which yeah. may modify it. Yeah. Would you then advise the leadership, maybe we have to modify the plan a little bit? So if you picture on day one of sales at, at, at the new stadium, yeah. we will be looking at where people are buying from all different angles. Sure. So we will be looking at the east stands across those blocks and going, right, well, where are the individuals with the longest tenure going? Sure. What's their age demographic? Excellent. Um, what, you know, what groups are buying mm. together? And, and start mapping against what our forecast is because we forecasted this to go where are the people going to be sick okay. to jump really reactive on that because yeah. we, our, our forecast also includes the fact that where we think season ticket holders will go. I have a question about that if yeah. I can ask it, right? I'd love you to tell me, but maybe you won't. So you have a forecast right now yeah. that if we have whatever, up to 40,000 season ticket holders in the, in the building and there's 53,000 seats, yeah. you probably have a forecast where you think the 13,000 empty seats are going to be. Yes. A good chunk of them in the away end, but yeah. whatever. So which is going to be the most popular stand, do you think? Um, right now, we can't, Look at we can't eyes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, So, yeah, we can't say that because we yeah. want to bias But you have a view. Yes. You have a view, and that's the point. So, you know, I might say, oh, South Stand, everyone's going to be on there, right? Look at his eyes, people, because I don't think it is the South Stand necessarily because people have different views. And, you know, I'm never going to not be behind the goal. Yeah. So to me, it's a decision for two places, North or South, simples. Yeah. And then if I'm in the South, it's lower part or upper part. That's my decision-making process. I'd love to, maybe offline, you'll show me what you think I'm going to do. That would be interesting. Yeah. But clearly, you don't want to influence people. Oh, the North Stand's going to be empty. Oh, take me time then. Yeah. Well, well and, and this is the thing. So we've got 30 odd thousand season ticket holders Already. wanting to pick their seats. Yeah. In fact, one of the things that we're very conscious of, we're probably more about 19,000 groups of that 30,000. So not every, people don't act as individuals. Those segments, isn't it? Groups, certainly. And okay, you call them groups. Yeah, yeah. Where people want to go is very, very subjective. Mm. So just because season ticket holders with a longer tenure, maybe sitting on the sides, and some individuals who haven't got as much tenure who are sitting in the, say, the Gladys seats mm. right now, a bit kind of concerned that, oh, these guys are ahead of me. They're gonna 
get my seat because mm. that's the best seat I think in the house. But you know what? Those guys on the side, I think their seat is the best seat in the house. The, my seat is going to be the best seat in the house for me because <laughs> I picked it. You picked it. You know? Yeah. Um, now, presumably when you're doing recommendations, right, then that leads into pricing structures as well. Yes. I mean, is there a, has the, don't give me the detail, obviously, right? Well, you can if you want. But <laughs> top down, you know, in the world I've worked in in the past, the FD would say, I want this stadium when it's full to generate this amount of money. Yeah. Okay. And, and I come to you because you've got all this data, which you can turn into insight, which will help me decide what the prices are. Yeah. Is that how it's worked? Yeah. It's it's excellent. Actually. So when people get uptight, right, potentially about theatre seating, for example, that guy in front of me is paying the other way around. That guy behind me is paying less. Yeah. That's life. It's like VAR and offside, isn't it? You're either offside or you're not. And if you want a seat in a certain place, it's going to cost a certain amount of money. Yeah. And try and remember, if you can, that that certain amount of money is also ultimately going to end up on a, wearing a blue shirt on a football pitch. Already, I've got mates who are in the upper Bullens, for example, and they know they can't have a like-for-like -like seat because it's going to cost them thousands of pounds a year because that's where the hospitality is. It's similar in the East Stand, I guess, as well, right? Yeah. Now, your forecast is going to fundamentally change, potentially, when people know how much tickets cost. Yes, because all our forecasts at the moment are based on, yeah, because price, we haven't introduced it yet. Yeah. Um, but we've accounted for it in other ways. But you're right, John, we haven't, you know. So here's a view. Prices. How are they going to know what the seat looks like? So um, Spending all this money when you can't go in the stadium, go, I'll have that one, please. How's that going to work? So this was something interesting that, that came out of the migration survey. Mm. So what you've just asked was a typical question that we got asked yeah, a lot yeah. in the survey. I probably asked it as well then. Yeah. yeah, I got a good answer, by the way. Well, <laughs> we, for a number of years, we've actually already got something like that within our, our platforms already. Um, and even previously, you, you had that like kind of virtual venue experience. That's where you right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spin around 360, mm. have a look at everywhere on the ground. But what comes to light is a lot of senior holders didn't know that. Mm. Why? Because they didn't need to, because if they're renewing a season ticket, if they're in the Auto Cup, why would they need to go I've online? I've been in the seat for 15 years. Yeah. I know what the view looks like. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, when people are choosing their seats, there will be a virtual venue tool okay. that they can go right down to the you know, exact inch around the stadium. You'll be able to sit so in. So literally, you can see the view, view from the seat, not the block, the actual seat. Yeah. Okay. And soon what we come out is indicative views from blocks to give That's people good. an idea. But then when into the price and when you are actually purchasing your ticket, okay. you'll be able to basically sit in that seat, have a look around, see where the exits and entries are. Sure. Not only just the pitch, because we know that's quite important mm. as well, how many you know, seats are until the, the next row and stuff like that. Sure. So that's a very detailed piece of kit that we've now, got. Now I'm sure, because Evertonians are very proactive, right? They're, they've already been on Spurs' website, because yeah. I have, and they have this, right? Yeah. Probably because it's, again, like us, a new stadium. You know, if Everton fans went and had a look at Spurs' website, is that sort of thing that we're going to have? Yeah, it's a, a very similar tool for right. Spurs, okay. because you've got the same kind of partners that generate, well, same technical partners as Spurs. Because so, yeah. it'd be bespoke to our stadium, but yeah. the, the, how many people have got 23 years? So we can't go into the exact number. I but, didn't think you would, but I was going to ask anyway. Yeah, but um, I mean, there is there's a, a decent amount of, in there that um, when we done scenarios using tenure mm. for the main driver for, for the, the migration. We had to make an instant follow-up decision on that. So how do we deal with groups of people mm. who have got different tenure? Sure. Because that's certainly something that's significantly come out from the fan base, even from when we made the announcement of how we're going to mm. do it and using tenure. So the main reason why we've gone from, you're going to have to wait until people less less tenure in your Who'll group. catch up. Yeah, to yeah, catch yeah. up. Very similar to our away um, credit kind of mm. system. You know, if you want to go with your mates, you have to mm. wait for them until they sure. hit that criteria. If we did it the other way around, say for instance, we've got 10,000 people in that top bracket. Sure. And if they bring, want to bring at least one individual with them mm. through either be, you know, friends and family, you know, mm. or even on the waiting list, that 10,000 instantly becomes 20,000. If it's Horrendous. two people, it's then 30,000. And doing it that way, you take your tenure-based process and you make it into a first-come, first-serve, which incidentally was the worst way that we could do it based on our own views and what the fans told mm. us. So we had, I think we had, we had tenure, 
we had away credits, we had the ballot and first come first serve. Mm. People were picking ballot over first come first serve. Mm. So if we'd done anything the other way, mm. we would just completely flood that first window. So making people wait and be patient. There's a couple of way, couple of positives on that. So one, it evens the purchase windows out nicely from a technical standpoint. So we have sure. 30,000 people jumping on on day one. Yeah, good and idea. Then, yeah. We have a history of websites crashing. So yeah. we, we so. try to mitigate that as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. And then the second one is, if you do wait for those individuals, we know that's a genuine group of people sitting sure. together. And that helps generate atmosphere, which helps mm, things on course. the pitch again. So that was a really key drive why we go, no, you're going to have to wait because if you do wait, that's a, that's real and that helps again. Okay, so I mean, forward. you talk about forecasting and we've already said that as soon as people know what prices are and things, that'll change. Yeah. But you do you have a clear um, view now, albeit it's going to be modified by real life, yeah, yeah, of the probability of people actually getting what they want, which is the stand they want, at the price point they want, sitting with the people that they want. Do you have a view? Yeah, we've got... and. Um, We've done the forecasting and we've gone from, I wouldn't say seat for seat, mm. but we've gone like kind of block for block. Sure. And we've got no areas of concern right. in terms of over demand because I know a lot of people are talking certainly about say, the South Stand mm. in the home end, but actually the individuals sitting at the side at, at Goods at the moment, those individuals have got the, you know, their best seats in the house, so they are likely to remain at the side. And plus, what's quite interesting when we've looked at individuals in the Gladys Street as a whole, the older that you get, the more likely you are you want to move up and out. What are you trying to say? Yeah, yeah. not about you <laughs> for John, but, but what is, and, and coming in, likewise, you've got individuals from the sides at a younger disposition who of course. want to come in. Yeah. And there's a, quite a, a natural symmetry that's going on there, which okay. again, we will keep an eye on. That, Minute by minute, hour by hour. And the thing you can't account for, but you must have some margin of error because what people say and what they do are not necessarily the same thing. Of course. Particularly if you've got a really strong um, element that is an unknown at the moment, which is how much. Yeah. Right? So, put you on the spot. How likely is it that a very significant majority of the people, if they have, favourite phrase of mine, testicular fortitude, right, to wait for their mate, right, who might only have 10, 11 years and they've got 23, yeah. that they'll actually they'll all be all right on the night. Well, take that specific example, John. So you're on day one, 23 years, mm. you'll have essentially about 43,000 seats to pick from. Yeah. Current modeling suggests that even if you've only got 10, you're still gonna have 27,000 wow. seats to pick from. Because what happens at Spurs is that they, their sales weren't as high as what they initially forecasted mm. and kind of well, what's going on here. Sure. People were waiting. So you're not the only individual, if you are in that scenario where you've got the most 10 mm. years and you're waiting for someone halfway down or even further down, you're not the only one. There's lots of people in your boat. So that's why sure. you, you, know, you shouldn't worry, be patient because there's thousands more seats. Although we are increasing the number of premium seating compared to Goodison, the, the, seat, the seats that are now premium if you think about the really poor views of Goodison, four and a half to five thousand of them, you haven't got a bad seat in the house. That's right. The yeah. worst seat, say the worst seat, the worst seat, the worst GA seat at Bramley Moor is better than the best seat of Goodison. Sure, because clearly, and you're not going to tell anyone, and I wouldn't expect you to, you're not going to say how many absolute season ticket holders there will be. No. But there's a key point coming out here, and make a number up. Just if there was forty thousand. There's going to be 13,000 left at the end, yeah. per se, yeah. just in broad brush. Don't do the sums, people, right? Of which some are for away fans, some are for FA Cup type things. Yeah. But the key is, although we'll have a number, that is the number of season ticket holders we're going to have, the number of seats is always going to be a lot bigger. Oh, yeah. And there's no rules stopping you from picking, apart from the away end, any seat in the ground. So hence, sorry, your sums are right, aren't they? Yeah. As I would expect, you've probably got a degree in it thing, right? But we're literally saying, you take off the away fans, you take off the premium seats, first through the door, all the other seats, your pick, John. Yeah. Now clearly there's gonna be some criteria, isn't there? Cause I can't go in the family section if it's just me. Yeah. So there'll be things like that, but technically every single seat that isn't premium and isn't the away end, it is there you get to choose. Exactly. That's a lot of seats. Yeah. 
yeah, it's a, a lot, lot of people got to pick. Some ditherers are not going to get there, are they? Right. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, so we say about the twenty. If you're halfway down a tenure ladder, yeah. say you've still got twenty-seven thousand seats. Yeah, to choose absolutely. From. Yeah. The last season to get hold of before we get to the waiting list has still got thirteen to fifteen thousand seats. To yeah, choose from, I, I so. heard that on a podcast the other day, yeah. which is a huge sum, isn't it? Really. Well, if you think a about n- number the number of seats, mo- the most seats that any season to get hold of in the last 10 to 15 years of course could pick from mm. is probably at the most 10,000 seats sure probably 7,000 decent seats yeah because of the restricted most. stuff yeah. so we're almost doubling the amount of right. good seats to pick from okay that's cool what else would people want to know what happens if it all goes wrong it won't it'll be fine okay you sure yeah okay well as I said before what we're going to be doing is monitoring where people Pitch and I think that's the key. You're yeah. going to dynamically monitor and adjust. Yeah. Does that mean ultimately? Is it? I can't remember. You know, I've read all the stuff. I watched the video and I still can't remember. At the same point, when we say, "Here's your date, John," we're also going to say, "If your mates mates on the waiting list are they in or out, or potentially, yeah. you know, you're not in just yet, but depending on us taking this, that you might come in. But what we want to do is, yeah, John, you can pick from the 6th of Jan, but also your granddaughter who's on the waiting list, she's in as well, or she's not. Yeah, she's same point, be, so yeah. You know, you know, you've got an informed decision to make. Yeah. I've t- we've told you, all your friends and family, who's in or out. So oh, that's you know good. So that's going to be, you're providing an insight for us then, which yeah. is great. So you can okay. make that decision. We, we wouldn't want yeah. you to go, oh, well, we're going to tell you now, and then in a month's time, we're going to say, the waiting list in or out, it, that needs to be at the same point okay so if i summarize that then because i was clumsy with my question yeah. right so if i summarize that once the first date which comes to me by email is when i can select my seat yeah. until it closes for everybody i can wait as long yeah. as i like yeah because i'm bone idle or i'm lazy or i'm waiting for somebody or i can't make my mind up or whatever yeah but a certain amount of time after my gate opens someone else's gate will open and we haven't determined yet how long that is yeah, yeah. okay yeah. that's cool that is really cool. But you are going to tell people, and this is based on friends and family, I guess, type stuff, is it? Yeah. The people you say you want to sit with, this is when their gates open. Yeah, so we're going to develop a tool so um, fans can go on the site. Yeah. Put not only their t- details in, sure. but they can put their friends and family details in as well. Oh, good, good, good. Submit the button and it'll instantly come back and go, right, John, you want to sit with me? Well, Mike's only got 10 years, so um, if you want to pitch together, your earliest date that you can pitch together is this. my state. Yeah. Okay. It just, it, and you can you'll be able to add up to six other individuals into that group, and it'll just give you an idea. Like if you all want to sit together, here's the first date. I think it's probably worthwhile you saying to to our viewers and everyone else will watch it as well. Why well, haven't you just gone for like for like then? Yeah. On seats because I'm in the Gladys Street. I want to go in the equivalent. Someone else is in the park end. They want to go in the equivalent. Someone's in but whatever. You just do that. So all this tech. Data yeah. science stuff's great, but like the like. Yeah. So, and I'll be honest, John, when we started this process two years ago, that was probably my personal view. So location would come into at some point, whether it be seat, block, mm. possibly even stand. But when you actually get into the data and the outcomes of that data, you start question, well, actually, is that the right way to go? And the further you go into it, it becomes one of the, probably the worst options we could have picked. So if we take Goodison, for example, and I'll, I'll pick some examples. So probably the easiest like for like that people will look at is the lower Gladys Street and the South Stand. Yeah, Home end, the, yeah. you know, there we go. We've got a lower South, which is uh, safe, um, Rail safe down, yeah. yeah. And then the upper South. So the lower Gladys Street is around about 40 to 45 rows deep. Hmm. The lower South is only about 27 rows. So if we were to do a like You can't seat, lift and drop. Well, if we did, what we would do is anyone from, say, row AA in the Glad- lower Gladys Street, we would put them on row one of the Upper South. Mm. Now, they may like that because they've got the front row of the Upper South. Sure. But what about the individuals who are the front row of the Upper Gladys Street? Yeah. I think they, because what we would do, we'd yeah. be putting them 15 rows back. Yeah. So on the most like-for-like stands, you would say, that's one issue. Park end. If you looked at the park end, we've got from, say, the goal, you have to, on a sense, circle look at the park end towards our left of the away fans, towards our right is the main stand. That's right, yeah. Do the exact same like for like seating in the park end. And the north stand. We would be putting people in the north stand 
who are the opposite sides of the away fans of Goodison, right next to the away fans. They probably have something to do with like that. I mean, you know yourself, John being in the, in the park end, got 500 seats blocked out right in the middle. Yeah. For the for captain's lounges, table and, yeah. and, and the people's club. If we were to do a like flag seat, we'd have a big massive gap right in, in the best seats in the north stand. Yeah. And and there's count once There's no you hospitality start, in the north stand. So. Yeah. Well, once you start getting into these kind of specific examples, you start going, right, well, we're probably edging and looking at all the different seating areas, we're probably edging to about 30, 40 percent where we would do it and likely be wrong. Mm -hmm. Then you look at the data when we ask the fans. And again, I'll use the, the, the Gladys Street and certainly the lower Gladys Street. 42% of the lower Gladys Street don't want to sit in the lower south. When you start looking at who they are, age, the, comes, the in. One, age comes in and tenure because tenure is, is linked mm. to age. Mm. So the you know, 30 year old, 23 years ago, who's sitting in the Gladys Street, who loved the seat, but may not love getting involved with the atmosphere mm. or you know, the big bands and stuff like that. What they want to do is actually move a bit further up mm. into the upper south, or a lot want to go into the east end right. based on the data. So you're edging probably past fifty percent. If we were to do a seat for seat overlay, sure. we would get half wrong. those wrong. And yeah. why would you want to start a process where right we're not going to get this wrong half the time? So that's where we developed the tenure process and go well. Let's put it on the fans to make their decision. Because okay. I don't want to make decisions for 30 thousand. I people. think that's really important, what, the last bit you just said. Sorry, all of it was, yep. right? But the, let the fans decide, right? Yep. Because there'll be people watching this and it, the, you know, hopefully it's, it's a bit lighter than the techie stuff you have to do. But my takeaway from what you just said was, like for like, 50% of the time, 50% of the time will be wrong. Yeah. Tell me to shut up, yeah? Um, 50% of the time we're going to be wrong. And we said perhaps half an hour ago, doing all the data analysis, doing all the scenario planning, spend years on, and it is years, isn't it? Yeah. Real years, not just man years. When you say a team of five, it's five, six, you know, multiply it by five or six, right? That we're 94% right, yeah. based on what the fans have told us yeah. so far. And we're going to dynamically change it when they don't necessarily do what they said, yes. because they've got a little bit more input, which is the price. Yeah. All sounds to me like you don't make the best job you can of something that can be emotional for me as an individual, but you say trust in the data, trust in the analysis, and trust in the insights. Yeah, and all of that saying, trust in the fans to make so, sense. So the fans have to pay attention Yeah, to, to, the, to the push comms that you've done. If you've not seen the stuff already, and the videos and red stuff, you need to, because the hardest job you're gonna get as a fan is making a final decision on a seat that you may stay in for another 10, 15, 20, 30 years, right? Yeah. All the tools are gonna to be there, virtual reality type stuff, to get the best chance of understanding the view you're gonna have. The other stuff, like how much it costs is dead easy because it's gonna be written down. It's then on you. It's then on you just to pick. And your, your informed decision is gonna be more informed if you listen to the comms push out. I mean, I know already of people who say, I'm not reading that, I'll I, I just ring them up and ask them. Well, if a thousand people decide to do that, you'll be on the phone forever. Yeah, definitely. And the next window will open, and then you'll go, but I wanted, oh, someone's taking it. We've all done it on airplanes, right? Don't be that person who takes too long to decide. Yeah. Um, I hope what I just said makes sense to you. Yeah, it makes sense does. to me. Hope it makes sense to them, <laughs> yeah? So, Mike, for me, that was fascinating, mate, and I do yeah. thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you, people. Cheers. Please watch it, share it, get your mates all together and pick a fab seat in a fab stadium. Take care. Bye-bye.